Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the previous units, we've been talking about how um, there appears to be intermediate layers of structure between the head and the phrase of a variety of categories. So for example, we saw there was quite a bit of evidence that we have n-bar categories that define constituents that are subject to one replacement. And we saw the same thing with verb phrases and do to replacement. And we even saw it to a lesser degree with prepositional phrases, adjective phrases, and adverb phrases with so replacement. So we have evidence then that we have quite complicated structure. As a consequence, we've proposed quite a complicated set of rules. And this is even leaving out the TP and CP rules. So uh, this is a little daunting and terrifying. We might ask the question is, are we missing any generalizations about these rules? These complicated rules we proposed, um, or this complicated set of rules we proposed, even though they're simpler than the flat structure rules, there's more of them. Is there a way in which we can capture generalizations that hold across the rules and thus simplify the rule set? So let's talk about generalizations across the rules. For each major category, there are three kinds of rules, and we're going to have special names for these. The first kind is the one that sits right on top and uh, in, that introduces the phrase on top of the rest of the sentence. Um, that, we've only seen one there that's really productive. That's the rule that introduces the determiner um, and takes an end bar as, its, um, as the next element. Um, don't um, get too attached to this rule because we're going to fix it a little bit later. All the other categories, I had to stipulate that this rule exists, but I promise we will come back to this rule. Um, we also had a rule that iterates and introduces modifiers. So for example, we had a rule that said n bar goes to optional adjective phrase n bar, and it iterates because there's an n bar on both sides of the arrow, which means it can feed itself and you can create uh, n bar structures embedded inside of n bar structures. It's internally recursive. And then finally, we had a rule that sort of stopped the recursion at the bottom. It took an n bar and introduced an n. And in the case of the noun phrase rule, the element that's attached to that is a pp. Um, we have names for each of these rules. Um, the rule on top is called the specifier rule. And the determiner is the specifier. The second rule is called the adjunct rule. And the adjunct rule introduces optional modifiers like the adjective phrase or prepositional phrase. And then finally, we have the rule that's called the complement rule. The complement rule is the rule that introduces the head into the tree and has um, one element, which we call the complement. In the rule you're looking at right now, it's the prepositional phrase. In a verb phrase rule, it would be the direct object. So those are um, our three rules, the specifier rule, the adjunct rule, and the complement rule. And we're going to make the claim that every major category has a specifier rule, an adjunct rule, and a complement rule. The second generalization we want to make is that within those three rules, um, the only thing that's ever obligatory is the... Um, it's the category that gives its node to the name of, above it, that is its head. So, for example, the NP rule, specifier rule, has an N bar head. Um, the adjunct rule has an N bar head. And the, uh, N, the other N bar rule, the complement rule, has an N head. So, well, this is the notion of headedness. It's also called endocentricity. So, noun phrases always have nouns in them. Um, this is important because there are no rules in our system of the form noun phrase 
um, consists of verb plus adjective phrase, right? There's no rule in which there is not a noun inside the noun phrase. Now you'll recall from before that we talked about how there's certain um, functional categories like complementizer phrases and tense phrases where it appears as if there is no head. We're going to have to come back to those and we'll do those in Unit 7. The third part of um, the rule system we've been looking at is the fact that everything that isn't a head is optional. So um, you'll see here noun phrase uh, consists of an optional determiner followed by an n bar. An n bar consists of an optional adjective phrase followed by an n bar. An n bar consists of a noun followed by an optional prepositional phrase. So everything there is optional. And with the exception of determiners, and we're going to come back to that particular little problem, um, everything is phrasal. So everything that is not a head is a phrase. Determiners are our temporary exception. We'll come back to them. So let's talk about what we want out of our theory. We want our theory to simplify that um, very complex list of rules I started with. We want it to capture those intermediate structures that we saw data for. We want it to capture the cross-categorial generalizations we just talked about, the optionality and phrasality of uh, non-head modifiers, the headedness of every phrase, the fact that we had three rules. So what we want to do is propose a system that is going to do that for all of the categories we might have. And the way we do that is by introducing variables into our system. Variables are categories that can stand for any other category. So x, y, w, and z are variables that can stand for any category, n, v, a, and p. And here's our simplified system. So we're trying to capture those basic things we talked about before. So in this system, you will notice that all the modifiers are phrasal and in parentheses, meaning they're optional. The, we want to capture the fact that there are three rules, which there are three rules here. Um, there's a specifier rule, an adjunct rule, which is self-recursive, and a complement rule. We want to capture the fact that there's a head, so the X here sort of propagates its way up the tree from the complement rule to the very top of the specifier rule. So we've captured those generalizations, and we've greatly simplified our system by proposing this rule set. Now what does this do for us? This lets us generate trees um, like this one, where I, we've got the variables in place, right? So we have an X at the bottom, we call that the head of the phrase. Then we have um, X bars on top of that, and then we have an XP on the very top. And that is sometimes called the projection of the head, because you have X, X bar, X bar, X bar, XP. That's the, the projection. All the other things that are sort of hanging off the, the side um, of this structure are um, have different categories. Now we can plug any categories we like into these uh, positions. So unlike phrase structure rules, where it's specifically said a noun phrase consists of an adjective phrase and a uh, any number of <laughs> sorry a determiner any number of adjective phrases a noun any number of prepositional phrases where it specified the category. The X bar structures don't specify those things. Instead, they specify that there must be a head, and then you can have modifiers, and those modifiers must be phrasal. Um, so if we just plug in N into the N position, that's what, here we have um, the X bar tree with N bars instead of um, X. Here we have the V bar. Here we have the adjective bar, the adverb bar. Same thing for prepositions. So we have identical structures for every category. That allows us to make generalizations about what our rule system might look like. And that is an interesting result because we have a relatively simple set of rules, three rules, specifier rule, adjunct rule, complement rule, and it should in fact account for 
all the major categories and all the major structures that we have.